Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Um, I want to talk just a little bit about this RAM trading still going on because it's uh, took a little bit of an upturn a little bit today. And uh, it's kind of was flattened out for a while. Now it's getting back up again. But I want to talk about this because there's some interesting videos out there about RAM and who's purchasing the RAM and what's causing this rapid increase in the price of RAM. And um, actually, it's... Uh, it's kind of interesting because everybody's focused on RAM price and not very many people have been talking about the price of EOS and where it's going. Now more people are concerned about the RAM. But the thing I'd like to say about the RAM is two things. First of all, I'd like to say that there's a lot of solutions for adding RAM. Um, it's not, and people argue with me a lot, but this is not a, this is not a resource that is finite. It's, a, it's not something that is incredibly rare. I mean, I understand that there's a process in order to add RAM. I understand that there's got to be uh, some sort of a, a, a um, the, the, the block producers have to have to agree on increasing the RAM and how much the RAMs are going to increase. But Block One, Dan Lammer, said they will increase the la uh, uh, RAM. It can be adjusted by the Bancor algorithm, so there's things going on. And also there's ways of shifting the cost of RAM to the users of the DAP or the people that receive the airdrops. Instead of airdrops being automatically showing up in your wallet, you might have to pay for some of the RAM to get the airdrop. So there's ways of getting around these high RAM costs for a lot of people. And I don't think it's a big issue. I would say right now, if you're speculating on RAM, uh, be very, very, very careful. It could drop dramatically. And I've seen it. I've watched it go up fast, and I've watched it go down fast. And what really worries me is I see a lot of people with a very small amount of EOS playing the RAM market. And uh, if you just continue to play this, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, you are going to get caught at some point in this game swimming without swimming trunks. You've never heard of the analogy that Warren Buffett uses. He says you always know uh, who is overextended by when the, the, the tide goes in. When the tide's out, nobody knows who's got sw swimming trunks on. When the tide comes back in, everybody knows who's naked. You will be naked if you keep trading this RAM because the, the more that it goes up, the, the more the opportunity is for people to dump it and you will be left holding the bag. And I've been, been warning people about this. I think some people have been caught and I think more people will be caught in the future. But it is a fast game. I can understand the adrenaline, the excitement to running the RAM, um, on piercing the RAM. But this is... A way, there are solutions. There's a lot of solutions to this. A lot of solutions. Way more solutions than there is um, finite, finite RAM. Finite RAM. Um, you know, like I say, RAM is just compute, computing power, and computing power can be increased. You know, I understand. There's like, there's like, there's there's rules and constitutions, and there needs to be some sort of an agreement by the block producers and all that other stuff. But it can be increased. It's it's not something that is a rare resource. Is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, so, so like I said, there's going to be stuff coming in. There'll be people to come up with ideas to how to fix the RAM issue, and that they'll be adding RAM. The RAM will be not continue to be um, at these high prices because it does hurt EOS, I believe, to have RAM very expensive. Uh, I mean, it, and it does hurt the block producers to have the RAM very high. Block producers are going to be paid on production, and if people are waiting for building stuff because they want to see what the RAM price is going to be. That's going to limit the people to build on this platform. And if it limits the number of people building on this platform, it's going to hurt what block producers uh, earn because they're paid in EOS. And obviously, if, uh, if, 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 if the platform is 90, 95% used up, um, you know, there's going, to be less, less, there's going to be less things built on this platform. So please, be very careful with the RAM. I wouldn't be speculating on it. Uh, I mean, I've always talked about this before. When I was a farmer, uh, I always hated commodity uh, contracts because when you were a farmer and you actually staked your operation, meaning you had to go out and buy a farm, buy equipment, buy seed, buy fertilizer, buy chemical, buy combines, buy cultivators, buy everything it took to produce the crop and then make the crop. And then at the end of the year, you, could, you, were, you were actually being shorted by people that didn't even own a farm or own a truck or own a, a tractor. They just shorted the market because they bought the contract and sold the contract. 
So I never did like that. I never liked the fact that if someone buy, buys RAM and they don't build with that RAM, they just hoard the RAM or, they use the, or they're keeping the RAM simply by speculation when people really do want to build on it and they're trying to be have some sort of idea of what it's going to cost to build. And you can't because somebody is running the RAM price up. And I literally saw it go up this afternoon um, 100 EOS in a very short period of time, 100 EOS a megabyte. I mean, 100 EOS... Uh, you know that's a thousand bucks. I mean, it went up a thousand bucks in just a, a little, a, a, you know, a, a very short period of time. So, you know, in like 20 or 30 minutes. So that really doesn't give you much ability to know what to do in the future when you're sitting there and you're seeing fluctuations of thousand dollars a megabyte in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, I don't think it's healthy for the platform to have these kind of fluctuations. In these sense. They will be solved. And things will be, you know, somewhat stable. So please bear with it. I think it'll work its way out. Like I said, there's a lot of software solutions for it. A lot of people will be introducing dApps that will be able to solve the RAM issue. They could shift the RAM to the users. They could shift the RAM different ways. So there's a lot of those things going on. So anyway, that's been the big talk mainly, and I wanted to cover it, talk about it a little bit. Like I say, I don't think it helps the block producers for this RAM price to be expensive. I think it hurts them, and I think they all know that. Uh, I think they all the block producers, if you if you talk to them individually, would say they'd like to see the RAM less expensive. I think that's pretty much, and I think everybody'd like to see the RAM less expensive. I think the block producers would. I think the the users of the platform would. I think everybody would. The only thing that's going on right now is it's just trying to figure out a way to price it. So that's what's going on, trying to figure out a way to price it, and they just haven't quite figured that out yet. But I believe um, the RAM thing will get solved, and I'm 100% confident it'll be solved. So. Like I say, everybody's in a line with this. I, I don't think, you know, Block One wants it this expensive. I don't think Block Producers want it this expensive. I don't think users want it this expensive. I don't think people that own Token want it this expensive. I don't think anybody does. I think pretty much nobody wants it. You know, we, we're trying to make a, a platform here where people will use it, not one that everybody speculates on the, on, on the resource so much that nobody can use the platform. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thank you.